नमस्कार माय डियर फ्रेंड्स लेट्स ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड द स्विचिंग रेगुलेटर डिजाइन सो इन दिस वर्कशॉप विल ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ वी कैन यूटिलाइज दिस पर्टिकुलर स्टेप डाउन कन्वर्टर व्हिच इज आल्सो कॉल्ड एज सिंपल स्विचर एंड दिस इज अ बक कन्वर्टर ओके सो दिस कैन टेक इनपुट फ्रॉम फोर पॉइंट फाइव वोल्ट टू फोर्टी वोल्ट ओके सो इट्स वेरी हाई रेंज इनपुट ओके एंड इट कैन गिव यू एन आउटपुट ऑफ अप टू थ्री एम्पियर्स सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू हैव ए Uh, you know, like applications of around one ampere or two ampere or three ampere, this will be one of the best choice. And this is very, uh, you know, like uh, uh, popular IC. It has been used in several applications that we'll see in this particular session as well. So in this particular session, you can see uh, this particular IC is having three package. One is TO two sixty three. This is, and this is TO two twenty, and this is also TO two twenty. But these two are little different uh, based on the pin configurations. Okay, so let's get into the design and details. So as you can see, LM twenty five ninety six. You can see this is an IC from Texas Instrument, and it has one fifty kilohertz switching frequency. Okay. Uh, if you click this particular, you know, like a uh, link, then this will take you to the product page. So that I don't want to take you now. Uh, this is a particular data sheet also. So in this session, we will try to give you both the links in the sessions. Okay. Now, as you can see, uh, as I already mentioned you, uh, this is a particular IC which is capable of taking the inputs from 4.5 volt to 40 volt. So in this session, what we will try to understand is what are the different parameters that we need to consider during the design. Okay. and how it is advantageous to use particular ics or how you can utilize this particular concept to get the same concepts into other ics okay so let's see the details of this ics if you talk about some features so since uh, this is you know like uh, these days lot of uh, miniaturization is happening like they are going for a small package and all so that's the reason this particular ic is not preferred uh, if you have a space constraint but uh, if you have to design some sturdy solution or something lm2596 is one of the best choice okay these days we have uh, new products available with the same configuration that you can see uh, lmr51430 and if you want to uh, you know like first time to market then you can go ahead with tlv m13630 okay coming back to this particular uh, ic we have 3.3 volt 5 volt and 12 volt ics as well as adjustable output voltage also so we will see a uh, 3.3 volt 5 volt and 12 volt as well as adjustable all as well where we will design 15 volt ratings okay so as you can see we have the ad adjustable output voltage range which can go up to you know like uh, 1.2 volt and as high as 37 volt plus minus 4 percent uh, okay so these were all you know like features as i told you it has a fixed frequency setting so you don't have to put any uh, frequency setting resistor or something like that as it comes with, with uh, new ic's so it is having 150 kilohertz talking about the application so you can utilize this particular uh, ic in appliances like freeze washing machines coolers all these things we have grid infrastructures we have epos we have home theaters many sound boxes are coming these days okay so in home theaters it is widely used and you know like we have also utilized several medical applications as well like uh, ecgs or defibrillators and all those things where we need very sturdy 5 volt regulators okay let us talk about the typical applications so as you can see let us say we have the input voltage v in here okay so 12 volt v input voltage is there here you just need one uh, you know like a electrolytic capacitor which is shown here 680 microfarad and this is going to be on off control so if you pull it down it will be permanently on if you pull it up then it can be switched off as well okay so that we are not doing that this is our ground plane ground pin and it has output okay so this output pin requires one inductor which will be uh, giving you the output which is regulated to 5 volt and one capacitor will be needed at the output which is 220 microfarad 
so input capacitor output capacitor and one catch diode which will be utilized okay and one inductor so only these four components we will need to design to give you the output of your choice okay if you go ahead with uh, uh, adjustable version then there will be requirement of two resistors which will be uh, used to set the uh, output voltage here okay so this will be uh, set output voltage and this feedback will be taken uh, at this particular place so i'll just tell you how it will be uh, let us say this is particular resistor so this feedback will go here okay and this will be ground and this will be your output got it so this v out will be taken so we'll see that as well <coughs> so this is how it works okay coming back to package information so as i told you uh, this is we have to 263 which is having very good thermal dissipation as well same is same is there with to 220 and to 220 with this uh, straight forward version and this is a little bit cranked version okay let's talk about the pin configuration so as i told you we have v input we have output pin we have ground pin which is circuit ground we have feedback pin and we have on off control okay so as you can see input pin you have to give your unregulated supply voltage with one capacitor output pin also same output will be taken and you have to give one capacitor there as well feedback pin uh, it senses the regulated output voltage to complete the feedback loop okay and we have on off control so if you want to uh, have on off control pull it high or pull it low to switch it off or on okay <coughs> so if you have to switch it on then you have to pull it down then it will be switched on okay let's talk about some of the electrical characteristics so what we'll do is uh, since it has uh, three versions one uh, one is 3.3 .3 volt one is 5 volt and one is 12 volt which is fixed one okay so all these three regulators will try to understand the electrical characteristics for all these fixed versions as well as for adjustable version okay okay <coughs> so as we talk about 3.3 volt version so you can see for 3.3 volt minimum voltage range will be required as 4.75 volt okay so uh, you need around a room of 4.75 minus 3.3 that is going to come up around 1.5 volt or something like that okay so just keep a gap of v input minus v output of approximately how much uh, 1.5 volt or more to get your proper output okay that's the one requirement as you can see we have the load current which is going to be from 0.2 amperes that is 200 milliamps to 3 ampere so you can see uh, it has a very good accuracy as well you are getting, going to get 3.3 volt and efficiency is bit low but this ic is very sturdy that's the reason that's the only reason we have utilized this particular ic in several designs okay coming back to 5 volt version so same manner 5 volt version it will require 7 volt okay so uh, at least around 2 volt you have to give uh, keep a room okay and efficiency is increasing a little bit higher got it similar to that uh, we have 12 volt version so if you need uh, you know like a 12 volt requirement at your v out v out is equal to 12 volt several applications are there these days which require 12 volt output okay let's say your v input is uh, you know like 15 volt or 18 volt or even 24 volt or even 30 volt or even you know like 36 volt so all these voltage ranges inputs you can utilize to get your output as 12 volt okay and you can see the efficiency has increased quite high uh, which is going to be up to 90 percent so as you go higher voltage output your efficiency is increasing that will show in the curve as well coming back to adjustable version so adjustable version you can see uh, the input voltage is ranging from 4.5 volt to 40 volt and your out uh, you know like uh, this is feedback voltage so feedback voltage you have to maintain 1.23 volt so the two resistor that will be utilized to go to vfb so my vfb pin voltage will be 1.23 volt and this is how you will get your v output okay so this is r1 and r2 our aim will be to design this particular r1 and r2 based on the uh, equation and we have to get your output voltage got it and efficiency is uh, minimum here they have taken uh, around 73 percent so hope you have understood the electrical characteristics of this particular uh, you know like now coming back to several uh, characteristics so let us talk about characteristics 
you can see based on junction temperature what is the output voltage change so output voltage change is below 0.5 percent and minus 0.5 percent so below less than uh, you know like one percent with temperature with temperature change with temperature change the output voltage is not changing at all it is just you know like uh, uh, plus minus 0.1 percent so this is very good with temperature it is very sturdy that's the only reason it is very much preferred in several applications okay line regulation is also very good with temperature uh, with input voltage like suppose input voltage is changing uh, let's say th there is a fluctuation in input voltage like you designed your your uh, IC for you know like 15 volt to let's say 5 volt output V out is 5 volt and V input is 15 volt now let us say your V input is changing uh, let's say 10 volt and sometime it became 20 volt then also there is very good line regulation similar to that we have junction temperature based on switching frequency so switching, switching frequency is uh, close to you know like uh, 150 kilohertz but this is not changing at m uh, much it is you know like uh, going up to around 142 kilohertz and 145 kilohertz or something like that okay efficiency as i mentioned already that if in based on input voltage and you can see uh, as we go on increasing the output voltage let's say 3.3 volt is uh, less than 75 percent then uh, going to 5 volt it is going to above 80 percent for 12 volt it is going even above 90 percent and if you uh, have you know like output as 20 volt then your efficiency is going close to 95 percent okay so good uh, and as i already told you dropout voltage was around 1.5 volt or something like that so you have to make sure the input voltage is must uh, you know like uh, just greater by uh, 1.5 volt or 2 volt than your output voltage so output voltage must be lower by 1.5 volt let us quickly see the uh, block diagram so as you can see uh, we have one feedback pin where in fixed version these two values will be uh, you know like uh, they are inside the IC so you don't have to worry about at all okay so that's the understanding of fixed voltage uh, output and if you do not have fixed voltage then what happens is this uh, adjustable in adjustable region what happens my R1 is open so this becomes open circuit and this becomes zero okay so this becomes short circuit so this is how you will be having a choice of uh, putting your feedback uh, uh, voltage separately okay good uh, like we feedback circuit design separately understood now coming back to your on off control so on off control as i mentioned already so we have uh, you know like uh, pulling it down to make it switch on and pulling it up to make it switch off so as you pull it up then what happens this reference voltage is pulled up and this this is how it will be switched off we have input voltage here and all these uh, error amplifiers and you know drivers and this is how you are going to get your output and you can see here it is some uh, like a current mirror circuit kind of thing and this is how you are going to get your output and we have a ground so alright I think you have a good uh, understanding of functional block diagram now now let us talk about how we can delay the startup let us say that you need a delay of you know like 2 millisecond or 5 millisecond after the input okay so let's say input is uh, coming and after 5 millisecond you need a startup so what happens is the on off pin which can be utilized for you know like uh, controlling the switch whether it can be switched on or switched off that pin only can be utilized to give you a output delayed output so what happens is let us say this is your input voltage and we have capacitor c1 and this is the two resistor which is r1 and r2 which is 47 kilo ohm 47 kilo ohm and this is how you can design a delay circuit okay so what is happening actually as this input voltage is ramping up okay so this c1 will start charging okay so as it starts charging that time uh, this uh, uh, this on pin will be high and this is how it will be switched off so it will not give you output no output okay and once it charged completely okay c1 gets charged completely so this will become open and once it's open completely then this will be pulled low and this is how it will be giving you the output v out so how much time it takes to charge based on this rc combination it will be calculated 
so tau equal to rc and you have to take charge time as 5 tau so 5 rc will be there and this much time you can design based on your own requirement okay so suppose 2 millisecond is required so you can calculate whether 0.1 microfarad into 47 is how much microsecond or millisecond and this is how you can design your delay circuit so it's very simple to design okay now let us talk about how we can uh, put under lock volt under voltage lockout okay so i mean generally these these things are not utilized uh, frequently but if you want to have this particular functionality in your you know like design then you can utilize this particular circuit to have the under voltage lockout also so we have one general diode so general diode it is it has been used and let us say this is your say simple c input v input voltage is there what is happening uh, we have one resistor here r1 and r3 and r2 and what is happening is under voltage lockout means 12 volt is given here okay so unless the 12 volt reaches okay this uh, will not switch on okay so what is happening is let us say my input voltage is uh, ramping up like this okay so unless it reaches 12 volt it will not switch on i'll tell you how i'll tell you how it will not switch on let us say the input voltage is 5 volt uh, and you have you know like uh, output as let's say 3.3 .3 volt input voltage is 5 volt but you don't want to switch on until it reaches 12 volt so what is happening this guy will not make this particular uh, transistor to switch on and this on pin will not be pulled down okay so if it is not pulled down then what will happen it will not switch on and basically how it will not pull down this v input is going directly through this resistor and keep it high okay so if it is high on off pin it will not switch on the output will not come and once this 12 volt crosses or based on this particular you know like a design uh, the voltage crosses at this particular Vx point then what will happen this base will switch it on this particular transistor Q1 and this particular on pin will be pulled down and this will this is how you are going to design your under lock under voltage lockout okay coming back to inverting regulators so the, the beauty of this particular IC is you have the capability of having your input regulator I mean inverting regulator as well so let us say you have input voltage okay let me make little bigger you have the input voltage here and then uh, same way like you are going to put under voltage lockout method here and then if you want to take up uh, you know like output then output if you are going to take from ground pin then it will give you the uh, negative voltage okay so this is how it's very simple to design your negative voltage output and output will be grounded okay so this this circuit has on off threshold of approximately 13 volt so the on off threshold that will be there is 13 volt like this particular design is under voltage lockout which is up to 13 volt got it now coming back to uh, 5 volt inverting regulator let us say we want to design a 5 volt inverting regulator how shall we do that so how shall we do is what do we need uh, we need here 5 volt output that is mentioned here okay a very simple uh, this is uh, you know like a design in delayed fashion so you can see one rc combination is given here so this is a delayed version here also it is delayed written as well now we need one input capacitor so input capacitor you know like uh, generally you can utilize uh, you know like a uh, 100 microfarad or 220 microfarad or 470 microfarad even 680 microfarad you cannot go more than a 20 microfarad so i'll suggest you up to 680 microfarad is good choice okay here since it is 5 volt so they have taken 68 volt uh, 68 microfarad okay 10 tlm capacitor if you're going for electrolytic capacitor you have to go minimum 100 microfarad but 10 tlm can withstand up to uh, you know like lower values as well okay you can see uh, we have electrolytic capacitor which is 470 microfarad got it now next choice is we have a catch diode which will be 1 and 5 8 2 5 so take uh, a catch diode which is super fast like ultra you know like uh, speed ultra high speed do not take the normal one 1 and 4 1 4 8 will not do okay 1 and 4 1 4 8 should not be used this is not fast okay coming back to this particular inductor selection that we will do in the design so this is 33 microfarad that is chosen see out you can 
utilize 220 microfarad and you have the uh, you know like uh, this is a particular diode which is going to clamp the output maybe uh, so this is how you are going to get good so this is how very simple design I mean there is no uh, requirement at all so we'll do all this uh, design in our uh, ORCID and we'll show you how to design your particular circuit let us move uh, we have uh, inverting regulator shutdown method so these are very advanced technologies so generally you do not have uh, require these things okay so we'll skip these portions uh, like shutdown method is not needed like you do not want to shut it down or shut it uh, you know like uh, switch on or otherwise if you really want to shut down what will you do you need to you know like uh, uh, pull it up right that's the understanding so what is happening let us say this is my minus 5 volt right so minus 5 volt what will happen you have a shutdown uh, so let us say you made it up then what is happening uh, this particular high will be pulled high and since this is grounded so what is going to happen since this is grounded so once you pull it high then this particular pin which will be collector which will be pulled high and on off pin will be uh, making sure that this is off so output will not come once it is pulled low I mean once it is you know like uh, the signal is low then what will happen this particular pin on off pin will be going to low and this is how you are going to get your uh, output at the uh, you know like uh, IC output if you want to utilize a optocoupler the same thing you can utilize for opto using optocoupler as well okay using your high and low so let's get into the real design of this particular IC uh, these all were you know like already given in the data sheet so what are the things that we have to consider while designing this particular uh, IC is we have to utilize what is my input capacitor so input capacitor is low ESR aluminium electrolytic or otherwise tantalum capacitor that is more than enough so one is aluminium electrolytic one is tantalum capacitor okay so aluminium electrolytic if you are using you have to make sure that the ESR values is lower and tantalum capacitor are already having a lower uh, ESR values compared to electrolytic capacitor so it is always preferred okay coming back to feed forward capacitor so one feed forward capacitor will be used when your V output is actually greater than 10 volt let's say 12 volt or 15 volt or something like that so this feed forward capacitor actually is used uh, to make sure the output proper okay <coughs> so what happens is as you can see the RMS rating of low ESR electrolytic capacitor okay so this is the you know like uh, this is the curve showing you what is the capacitor rating and what is the capacitor voltage rating okay so if you want to utilize a 680 microfarad capacitor then let, let me tell you only one thing uh, let's say RMS value is uh, you know like milliampere so let's say it is having uh, 1600 milliampere okay so capacitor voltage rating is 10 volt to uh, 60 volt either you can utilize 120 microfarad 180 microfarad 270 microfarad or all other values okay coming back to inductor selection <coughs> so if you want to uh, select your inductor so let's say 3.3 uh, volt regulator okay so in 3.3 volt regulator what is going to happen is based on the load current based on the load current and based on the input voltage your uh, inductor value will change okay so let us say for 3.3 volt you have the input of let us say 5 volt okay so what will happen and let's say you have to design 2 ampere okay so 5 volt 2 ampere you need so this is the 5 volt and this is the 2 ampere so you come here so what is the thing that is coming up 15 micro Henry so your L value will be 15 micro Henry okay now let us say you have input voltage of around 12 volt so what will happen 12 volt is coming up to here okay so this particular point 12 volt and let's say 1.5 ampere you need so 1.5 ampere is here so cross this particular two points here and here so this particular point is reached okay so in this region you can see we have 47 microfarad okay okay so in this region you can see uh, we have 47 microfarad so 47 microfarad will be needed if you have the input voltage of 12 volt and you need a 1.5 ampere rating at the output 
so same manner you can utilize uh, for 5 volt option as well like for 5 volt 2 ampere rating what would be uh, you let's say my input voltage is 9 volt and uh, my output is 5 volt and we need a uh, 2 amperes so 5 volt 2 ampere is here and 9 volt is somewhere here so cross this one and this one so you're going to get land up here so around 33 micro henry so 33 micro henry will be the choice and the numbers this is written like l23 l24 l40 l39 so all these are actually given in the data sheet and based on that particular like let's say uh, i told you 33 microfarad which is going to be l32 so l32 directly from the seat you can take up that is a part part number okay or equivalent to that you can take up coming back to uh, 12 volt same way input voltage and what is the load current based on that crossing you can select your inductor the main point is uh, you know like adjustable version so in adjustable version what you have to do is you have to have a current let's say you need a 15 volt and 1 ampere okay so what you have to do is you have to calculate et value so et value there is a formula okay and in that formula you have to find out what is your et value and based on that et value what you have to do is uh, that et value let's say is coming up around 30 okay so 30 and what is that one ampere rating so this is one ampere so 30 and one ampere rating if you come here then you're going to land up in this region and in this region you're going to get l29 which is going to be 100 micro henry okay so 100 micro henry will be chosen for your 15 volt 1 ampere but i am saying assuming that your et value is 30 if your et value is something else then this is not the case okay so this is all uh, about you know like inductor values like l15 l21 l22 all these numbers were there in this just now you saw right so these particular numbers are there based on that with various uh, inductance values are there and uh, you can utilize uh, several companies are given here a Scott company is there then Renko company is there okay Coilcraft is there pulse engineering are there and several part numbers of inductors are there so you can utilize several of them okay same way other values are also given here so this is not our choice so no problem let's go back to our typical applications so typical application is very important okay so what we are going to do is fixed output series buck converter okay so what do we need we need here v input we need one input capacitor we need the ground connection we need the on off connection if you permanently switch on then put it ground directly okay and we need one catch diode d1 and we we need one c output which is output capacitor and send it directly to the system or your load and this is your inductor selection so only these four four five components that we have to utilize input capacitor output capacitor inductors and your catch diode catch diode rating must be you know like around 2 ampere or more okay or keep it around uh, uh, 5 amperes or something so that it never fails up okay so this is how you can do okay guys uh, so what we'll do is let us say uh, we need uh, you know like uh, c input which is going to be 470 microfarad so 470 microfarad i am taking up in c input capacitor then c output capacitor uh, it has taken 220 microfarad okay and i'll suggest you uh, for let us say what is the output that is uh, taken here so output is not given here so we'll choose something let's say 5 volt we need at the output okay so what you can do 470 and uh, input is let us say 12 volt so input is 12 volt so output is 5 volt okay so what do we need uh, input capacitor is 12 volt so 470 you can take up to around 35 volt rating also or 50 volt rating also is fine uh, this 20 microfarad you can take up uh, they have given you a 25 volt rating so even 25 volt rating or 35 volt rating will be fine okay and <coughs> scott key rectifier is given here a 5 ampere rating with 40 vo 40 volt capacity okay an inductor is 68 micro henry that is l38 that was given in the data set. but we have to see whether l38 68 microfarad is needed okay so here actually they have not given for what they have designed it okay so let me just show you what is l l68 micro henry l38 okay so let us say l38 is here which is 12 volt l38 is here okay 
uh, L38 is here as well in 5 volt rating. So L38 5 volt rating what is happening? Let us say input voltage is around you know like 15 and we need uh, more than 1.5 ampere. So this is the perfect choice for your L38. Got it? This is how you can do. But that was my assumption. Okay. We are not going to talk about uh, whether it is 5 volt output or 12 volt output or 3.3 volt output. What we need is we have to understand what are the things we needed. So we will design one by one each one of them. Okay. So let's do that. <coughs> First of all, you have to design requirement. You have to have the design requirements. What is the design requirement? Either you can have 3.3 uh, volt, 5 volt or 12 volt based on the fixed voltage output that you need. Okay. So for example, they have taken 5 volt. The DC input is taken as 12 volt. Okay. And the load is taken as 3 ampere. So this is what this was the design and this is the result that was given. Okay. Got it. So this is how this was the design. So design requirement I should have kept up and it would have been easy like this was the design requirement and this is the typical design with fixed output buck regulator. Coming back to the detailed design procedure. So detailed design procedure you know like uh, Texas instrument has some uh, tool which is called web bench. Okay. So you can utilize your web bench power designer as well. Otherwise what you can do is you can you know like uh, start designing by entering your V input, V output and I output. So these three uh, things you keep in your mind in your you know like tip. And if you want to use this web bench tool you can go to this particular link ti.com slash web bench and you will be able to utilize this particular values and it will give you the output directly. Otherwise we will do manually what is the design process that we will see one by one. First of all what you have to do is you have to do the inductor selection based on your input voltage output voltage and I out. Okay. So what is the thing that you have to do decide what is your input voltage decide what is your output voltage and decide how much current you want at the load. Okay. These three things must be known to you. Okay. So once these three things are known then we will be able to find out what is my inductor then we have to identify what is my output capacitor. Then we have to select one catch diode which by default you can take 5 ampere rating of 40 volt ultra fast diode. Okay. So that is more than enough and this is C input. So I think after this much explanation of this particular IC we are now uh, I think we have memorized almost all the values like what will be the C out, what would be the C in, what would be my diode and how much inductor will be required. So inductor only we have to select based on the uh, graph curve that was given. Okay. Now coming back to the adjustable version. Okay. So in adjustable version only one thing is going to change. Uh, we have the input voltage here. We have the output voltage here and we have output you know like capacitor input capacitor. We have catch diode. So all these things we already know. Okay. And we have the inductor selection that is there based on the ET value. Okay. So ET value you have to calculate in your you know like uh, adjustable version. Now only one important thing that is going to happen is we have to have a feedback resistor uh, you know like a uh, uh, design. So R1 value and R2 value you have to design. Okay. So if you use this particular formula like V output is equal to V ref into 1 plus R2 by R1. So R1 you choose 1 kilo ohm based on that R2 value you will be able to calculate using this particular formula. Okay. So let us say you can start approximately with R1 equal to 1 kilo ohm and uh, you know like uh, for the best stability okay and this is how you'll be able to find out your r2 value got it so as you can see one application is given here like you can utilize 470 microfarad 220 microfarad c output and 470 microfarad c input we have a 5 ampere 40 volt catch diode and we have 68 microfarad uh, you know like uh, inductor so this is the uh, this this all three values are used and it is going to give you 5 volt 3 ampere at the output. Okay. Good. So let me design and tell you uh, let us let us see one application that we are going to do. Okay. So this particular design is for you know like uh, uh, one uh, motor driver motor driver. So a stepper motor driver was used in one of the medical application and there we needed uh, six, 17 volt output. Okay. So input voltage was 24 volt and we have load current requirement as 3 ampere and frequency uh, is already there which is 1, 150 kilohertz. Okay. 
now coming back to my r1 r2 design so what is going to happen let us say r1 we are going to consider as 1 kilo ohm so based on that r2 value is going to come up as 12.82 kilo ohm okay if you want uh, uh, you can make sure that your r1 value uh, based on what practices we are doing uh, r1 value must be between 240 ohm to 1.5 kilo ohm okay so it must be between these two so if you want you can change these values let's say 0.9 a uh, kilo ohm you can keep <coughs> or you know like 1.1 kilo ohm you can keep to get your uh, standard value of your r2 as well okay so i have designed a, a standard value so let me give you here so what is going to happen is this is the design equation <coughs> before that we'll do the inductor selection so for inductor selection what is the thing that we need we need et calculation okay so et calculation based on this particular formula we have to utilize like v input minus v output minus v saturation multiplied by v output plus v drop divided by v input minus v saturation plus v drop and multiplied by 1000 divided by 150 kilohertz so all these values we can utilize and v drop generally uh, we are going to consider 0.5 volt based on the diode that you are going to use uh, you can utilize your drop voltage okay <coughs> saturation voltage you have to take up 1.16 and based on this calculation what i am going to do is as i mentioned v input is 24 volt output is 17 volt and saturation is 1.16 drop voltage is 0.5 volt and f is uh, 150 kilohertz so the et value that is going to come up is 29.19 volt microsecond okay so i am going to go here uh, 29.19 approximately is in this region okay and my output current that is what that was needed is 3 ampere okay so you can see 3 ampere and this one so it is going to land up in this l39 and l39 will be my choice so l39 is actually nothing but 47 micro henry okay so l22 l31 and l39 all these things are 47 micro henry okay so this is how you are going to read if you are going to land up l21 l30 or l38 or l44 all these things will be 68 micro henry okay so this is how you are going to select your inductor output capacitor you can go ahead with uh, 680 micro farad or 220 micro farad or 150 micro farad but make sure the output uh, you know like uh, uh, voltage rating is uh, i think you can skip this 35 go ahead with uh, 50 volt or even 63 volt because it is having 17 volt output okay understood then coming back to a uh, feed forward capacitor so feed forward capacitor since my output voltage was more than 10 volt okay so what is going to happen is your feed forward capacitor must lie between 100 pico farad to 33 nano farad so what is going to happen is a uh, 1 by 31 divided 1 uh, by 31 into 10 to the power 3 into r2 so r2 is going to come up let us say 16.9 kilo ohm okay so in that case we are going to utilize Uh, 1.9 nano farad or approximate 2.2 nano farad which is the closest value okay good so uh, i had used actually r1 is equal to 0.9 kilo ohm that's the reason r2 has come uh, 16.9 otherwise it was uh, shown to you 12.82 kilo ohm so that is not the problem okay coming back to the output capacitor and feed for, uh, feed forward capacitor selection table so they have given uh, this particular uh, table in the data sheet okay so let us say my output voltage is needed you know like uh, 15 volt then what will you do you can have uh, output capacitor as around uh, 220 micro farad and then uh, feed forward capacitor as 680 pico farad okay understood if you need let us say uh, output voltage as 9 volt okay then what will you do For 9 volt, 330 micro farad you can utilize, and uh, you can utilize 1.9 nano farad. Okay. Good. So we have reached up at the end. Uh, now catch diode selection, as I already mentioned, that you can utilize this particular part number, which is going to be uh, 1N5828, and with 5 ampere and 40 volt rating. And reverse recovery time of your selected diode must be less than 50 nanosecond. So always try to utilize. Scott key diode kind of thing, okay. <clears throat>
and we have input capacitor so input capacitor you can take for this particular design as uh, you know like a 680 microfarad 63 volt so that will be more than enough so hope you have understood the complete design process of this particular simple switcher that we have uh, had in our you know like session so this particular ic which is lm2596 it is very very popular ic and it can be utilized in several applications like medical devices or you, you know uh, like other appliances and uh, home theaters okay so if you do have any questions regarding this particular ic or any other switching regulators and what is the application and what is the you know like uh, output current rating and voltage rating that we need to take care of based on the input voltage and the output voltage parameters so you can reach out to us and we shall be able to come up with your answers so if you do have any uh, you know like industrial requirements or you know like uh, any professional requirements regarding the uh, designs or any design process design supports that you are looking for you can always reach out to us we shall be able to uh, answer you out thank you